Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Let's, uh, before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, we thank you for saving our soul. Father God, we ask you this morning as we um, read our word, we ask you to give us wisdom and knowledge. Excuse me. We ask you to bless us with understanding. We ask you to open our eyes so we may, may see and open our ears that so we may hear your voice. Father God, we want to apply this word to our word, uh, our life every day, not just a few few days or a few minutes or just one situation. We need to apply this word every day to our life. Father God, help us to do that. Bless the ones that are hearing it and bless the ones that are reading it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Key verse today is Romans 3 and 5. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's, un- God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I'm using a human argument. Subject, do we ha- do we take it do we take it for granted? Christian truth, so I'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like. I am not taking grace for granted. I am not selfish. I am not prideful. I'm everything he calls me to be. It's so easy to take the grace we are given for granted. A lot of times we don't look at how this grace was given or why it's given. We know we have it and we can use it. Just because we have it doesn't mean we can use it. I have a credit card. It has a significant amount on it. But it doesn't mean every time I want and need, I, I need to spend on that card. It means if I need it, I can use it. I know it's there for me just in case I want to spend. I can but it's, it's a limit on my credit card. If I go over the limit, I have to deal with fees and my credit score decreasing its consequences. Even if I don't pay on time, it's consequences. But that's why I jot down when I pay and how much so I can, so I won't miss my card, mess my card up. We all do this with our cards, right? We must understand that there's no limit to grace, but we can't overuse our grace. And the verse today is telling us this, just because we have grace doesn't mean that we should do the unrighteous things or our, our flesh wants to do. We, we shouldn't say that we are justified with what we do because it will bring glory to God and that we, that he is unjust if he punishes us for our wrongdoings. No, this is the wrong way to look at our wrongs and how he punished us for it. We have to remember that sin is not of God. Sin is what God had planned for the, sin isn't what God had planned for this world. When we commit a particular sin, it's because it's what we desire to do. The verse six says, certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? The person that asks Paul these questions is saying that, how could God judge the world if it brings him glory and that he couldn't, though the sin and faults of others still bring understanding to some humans. Look at Judas, look at Balak. He wanted Balaam to cuss the the Israelites still. Every time he tried to, he he would bless them. Numbers 23 and 11, Balak said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I bought you to cuss my enemies, but you have done nothing but bless them. See, even in, in this, God gets glory, but we must not sin just to say we can and he can't. He's God. And we can't make such a statement as that, Romans 6, 19, I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you was once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness. So now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. Paul used terms that would uh, they would understand. Paul wanted them to know that they were once slaves to impurity, but now they were slaves to righteousness. And they, they should do things that are of righteousness, not of the flesh. We are now walking in grace because of what Christ did. And because we are walking in the light of the Lord, we don't have to do anything but walk and be in him. However, whatever we do that is righteous, God will get glory from how he had molded and shaped us to be. If we are worried about giving him glory, let's let's do it in a right way. Let's do it in a way that pleases him. And how can we give him glory by our members of our body, by the way we live our lives? Glory is for him, not for us to decide when and how he receives it, but us doing it. God is waiting for us to live a righteous life, not a life, to, to not live the way we want, thinking this would help him. God doesn't need our help with anything. 
Today, be careful with what you say and how you present yourself. Because when we live a righteous life, it will, it will give God glory a lot of times. We don't give God glory for nothing because we are so prideful and wanting to get recognition about everything. But some things we as humans shouldn't take away from God. God loves us so much and he doesn't want us to take for granted what he's given to us as a free gift. Today, ask God to help you not to take his love, grace, and mercy for granted. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything. You Thank you for everything. Thank you for grace and mercy. Father, we desire to have more. We desire to take you to not take you for granted, not to take our grace for granted. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Help us to stay focused on you. Help us to love you unconditionally. Lord, we need you so much. We ask you to guide us and, and we will listen. Lord, help us to be kind and compassionate. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Lord, spread your blood over our lives, over, our, over cover us in your blood. Protect us from the seen and unseen things. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Romans 6, 19 is our one our reference. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness. So now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. Hebrews 4, 15 through 16. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who is every respect has been tipped as we are. Yet without sin, let us... Then with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For the reading, Isaiah 37, 1 through 8, 38 and 22, Galatians 6, 1 through 18, Psalm 64, 1 through 10, and Proverbs 23 and 24. That was our further reading. This ends, do we take it for granted? Remember that your memory verse, your key verse, your further reading and references are in the bio. I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Thank you for listening.